Good morning, Daily Bible Time. Dominic Steele. Tuesday morning, thanks for joining us. And uh, really, it is a climax moment for us today in today's 2 Samuel chapter 5 passage. And um, John Woodhouse, the commentator, says uh, the story of David's rise from the young shepherd lad in Bethlehem to king of all Israel reaches its climax here in 2 Samuel 5. And we're invited, says Woodhouse, to pause and observe the new king secure in his new home and our attention moves from the city to David from the city's most important building for the time being to the great king who dwells there Jerusalem becomes important because it has become David's city so 2 Samuel 5 verse 9 David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David he built up the area around it from the terraces inward so Jerusalem becomes David's royal city um, John Woodhouse says since the city has not previously been taken, it doesn't actually have a particular association with any one Israelite tribe, and so therefore it can be associated with David himself. And the king is secure and prosperous. Verse 10, he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. The most important force in David's story is the Lord's presence. Verse 11, now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent envoys to David, along with cedar logs and carpenters and stonemasons, and they built a palace for David. It's likely that this happened after David had subdued the Philistines, and the whole difficult story of Israel and its king, you'll remember, started with the desire in Israel to be like the nations. And we see here a little hint of trouble in the close relationship of the king of Tyre with the king of Israel. Verse 11, Hiram, king of Tyre, sent envoys to David along with cedar logs and car carpenters and stonemasons, and they built a palace for David. So Tyre kind of buying David's friendship. Um, I mean, it's kind of understandable from their point of view. The, prob the king of Tyre would note the defeat of the Philistines by Israel. He thinks, I don't want to be like that. I want to be friends with Israel, so he reaches out in friendship and, and also probably another little self-interest. Um, uh, if Israel prospers as a neighbor, well, that's good for Tyre economically as well. And so there's a diplomatic self-interest associated with the king of Tyre's endeavors. But just a hint, and we'd be wise to reflect back to that thing. Oh, the king of Israel is not to be like the nations. And here we have the king of Israel established in Jerusalem and immediately little hints of buddy-buddiness with king of the nations and remember don't become like the king of the nations that's just going to lead to trouble we'll check in what's happening verse 12 david knew that the lord had established him as king over israel exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people israel good that's good we see the faith of david david trusting the promises of god concerning him but verse 13 trouble after he left hebron david took more concubines and wives in jerusalem oh dear and more sons and daughters were born to him. These are the names of the children born to him there. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Eli Elishua, um, Nephek, Zaphia, Elishema, Iliad, and Ephelet. Now we've just been shown the greatness of David. But now, verses 13, 14, the weakness of David. The weaknesses that John Woodhouse says will undermine David and we know that from reading on yep hint of the foreign nations complexities with other nations being like a king there's a hint of complexities to come but verse 13 and 14 David took and what David took was concubines and wives girlfriends and wives trouble sin wives plural sexual relations are going to be David's undoing I mean, it's likely some of the wives had a political dimension, but well, I mean, oh, he, one of the names listed is Solomon. And we know Solomon. We're going to meet him in a couple of chapters' time, son of Bathsheba, with whom David will have an adulterous affair, murder Bathsheba's husband, and then later marry her. And so we are reminded in verses 13 and 14 abruptly that although in verses 9, 10, 11, 12, Jerusalem was this seat of wonder. It is also, 13 and 14, a seat of failure for David. We want to look forward to the Lord Jesus, who will be a king after God's own heart, who won't make those errors, 
who won't be a king like the nations and will have a heart like his ultimate heavenly father God. Um, I mean, his dealings with women will be completely honourable. Let me lead in prayer. Father, we thank you that you have given us a king not like David, but like Jesus. We have You've given us a king in Jesus. And we pray that you would help us to trust him, to honour him, uh, to trust him in everything, for he is a king who is not like the nations, and he is a king filled not with self-interest, but other person-centeredness. We ultimately see that as he lays down his life for us. We thank you again for Jesus and help us to honour him and trust him. We pray that in his name. Amen. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday morning on Daily Bible Time. We look forward to you being with us tomorrow morning Wednesday. God bless.